Uh, next on the boards for us at Catalina is our new 525. It's a boat we're all very excited about. It's going to incorporate all of the best 5 Series features, both safety features and comfort features, along with the fit and finish that the 5 Series has become known for. Uh, we've incorporated uh, a lot of the 425 um, styling cues. I think it still has enough Catalina DNA where it looks like a Catalina, which is important to us to have that continuity across the line, the family continuity of the boats. Um, looking at the profile of the boat, fairly low profile, but gently stepped up cabin structure. Very subtle, but I think it looks better than having it one continuous line from bow to stern. Uh, we've got it, our, our bow angle is 9 degrees. We've done a lot of experimentation with that. 9 degrees seems to be about the right angle where you maximize water line and minimize the possibility of the anchor hitting the bow. We'll have a molded in uh, bow sprit with a uh, stainless steel um, strap bobstay, integrating the anchor roller and a permanent attachment point for an asymmetrical or code zero. Uh, again, 20 inch lifelines, very wide weather decks, uh, three inch bulwarks, very secure feeling boat. Uh, the beam is 15.5, so we've got, you know, we can afford fairly wide weather decks. However, we're putting the chain plates inboard. Um, most production boats this size will have the chain plates outboard. A couple reasons for that. One, it's just way cheaper to build the boat that way. You don't need any internal structure to take those chain to resolve those loads of the chain plates. However, you can't carry any overlapping head sails. If you look at some of the boats from uh, most of the builders in Europe now, they're putting a self-tacking jib on, which we will have on this boat, but it completely eliminates the possibility to carry overlapping head sails. So you can't develop any power in the head sail at all from the um, from the slot between the head sail and the main. So this boat can carry up to about a 155, maybe 160. We have a, a very long Genoa tracks on this boat, and they'll be inboard. So we'll be looking at somewhere between nine and ten after resheating angles. So there's some element of performance built into the boat. Um, fairly tall rig. This, the standard rig is going to be about 74 feet. We'll offer an ICW uh, friendly rig as well. Probably have to go out of the boom a little bit for that. Um, the keel is going to be kind of a modified bulb keel. Um, not real shoal draft because there's just a minimum to how sure you can make the draft and get any performance out of the boat. We didn't want to sacrifice the performance uh, for ultra low draft, but I think we've achieved a good compromise here. We'll have our molded in skeg for good prop protection and a balanced rudder using all the five series features in the, uh, in the rudders we've done in the other boats. Uh, we'll have a, a stern platform that will uh, lower down for dinghy access. Um, it'll be big enough to keep a dinghy in there that's deflated or a rib that you let the air out of the tubes, but not a dinghy that's fully inflated. So we'll probably have a little compressor back there and kind of kicking that around. Uh, twin helms, big cockpit with a built-in dinette on, on one side. It's looking like we're going to put that on the port side at this point. We're still developing the deck. The interior is still being developed, but we have a pretty good concept of what it's going to be, and we've done some preliminary drawings uh, for review by um, by customers and others. And what we're going to have is a fairly traditional main cabin with a uh, large U-shaped set T on the port side, uh, benches and a permanent nav station on the starboard side, and a freestanding set T in the middle of both. It could actually be oriented either towards the set T on the starboard side or the dinette on the port side. Uh, we'll have uh, two aft cabins. One cabin will be convertible so that it'll have two bunks you can put together to make a big double or separate to make two singles. Uh, the berth on the starboard side will be fixed as a large double. Uh, where the boat's going to be unique is in the forward end of the boat, forward of the mast. And that, that will be basically the owner's uh, suite forward. We'll have a large in-suite head with a big stall shower. We've, we've determined not to have three heads, but to have two big heads. Uh, I don't think that, that uh, a 52-foot boat should have the same size head as a 30-foot boat. So we're not using what's become very popular to have modular components where you just put when you do a bigger boat, you put more of the same module in. We thought we'll do new modules and make them a little more spacious and a little more um, household scale. So big roomy showers and big heads and big beds. <laughs> uh, a unique part of the forward cabin will be an area we've reserved to be somewhat flexible. Um, that will be uh, what's referred to in the industry as stick built. And it'll offer the owner a lot of options to how they want to organize that one part of the boat. So this will be forward of the bulkhead, but on the uh, 
port side of the owner's cabin forward. Uh, we're going to offer an option for an office, a media room, a den, a lounge, a laundry room, whatever the customer wants that part of the boat to be. Uh, we've, we've built in the flexibility so we can accommodate with about four different standard arrangements, however the customer wants to set the boat up in that one section of the boat. So I think that's going to be a winning combination for us. It, it dresses everything folks with uh, uh, other Catalinas have told us that they wanted their next big boat. Um, and uh, we have a, a lot of interest in the boat so far and a number of um, commitments from dealers.